In this video is the 2019 higher level question 3, but it's question 3a looking at axonometric projection. Um, so all we've done it just to set up this question is these are the crow's foot, our starting position, 30 degree line, 30 degree line, vertical line through the center. Um, for this question we're asked to draw the axonometric axis as shown, that's these, so 30 degrees, 30 degrees, vertical line as I just said. Part two is to draw the given elevation inclined at 15 degrees as shown. Draw the given end elevation um, inclined at 15 degrees as shown. Draw elevation, end elevation. And then finally to draw the axonometric projection of the petrol pump. So draw the 3D view of it in the center. For this we're going to start by drawing the elevation up here um, top right. So pick a distance back here. It doesn't matter how far that we go back. We need about 100 and 20 mil above the top of it um, from here up just based on the size of the object. Now we've got uh, to do this it's until 15 degrees so it's 15 degrees to the vertical so line up here with your um, protractor draw a line here at 15 degrees and that's inclined back up this way. So a light line up along this way. If you don't have a protractor or there's something wrong with your protractor you can do it with your two set squares combined together in s as well. So with your 60, 30 degree set square, put the, the short side sitting down on your T square. So 60 degree angle here, 45 degree set square up against like this. And then this angle here is 15 degrees. If I rotate this down this way, I get the line that's perpendicular to it as well. Okay, so you can do the uh, both of those that way. Um, 15 degrees, perpendicular to 15 degrees there. Okay, so next part, once we have that done, is we can start to find uh, the view off out here to the side. So it's out 40 and then another 10. We're measuring up this side here and uh, 90 millimeters I'm gonna mark in the 330 sections as well, as I'm marking it. And again, we can use our two set squares together. Can draw these lines. So now you can use your sliding set squares to do this if you like. That works just as well. Or with the set square, t square, and or set square and two set squares and two set squares and t square. So seventy millimeters out along this way. That gives us the end point that 70 joins to down here and that gives us that outer edge so just darkening in one and two we've got the little line here in the center that's parallel to that okay so from the point down here at the bottom so that point so sliding set squares light line up through it and then it's a dark line in this part here Continue that up further and it hits the top. That's going to be the center for our radius circle up here. So I can darken in the remainder of this now. Okay, so that's most of the elevation. The final part of this then is just to draw that circle. We're just told that it's radius R, we're not told a specific number for it, but if we look closely at it, we can see where the center of the circle is, that's at this point. So that's from where that 40 is there, parallel to the outside, continued up along. So that's the center. We also can see that the circle touches at this point. So joining the point of our compass to there. I can draw this circle around here. And that completes the elevation part of this. Next part of this is to draw the end elevation. So the end elevation is going up on this line out over here. Again, we've got the same idea, the same angle. So again, 60 degrees um, and 15 degrees off up along this way. So 15 degrees, and um, so again, down measured with our 60 degree angle, 60 degree angle first, and then we use the 45 degree, 
twice. So I can use that part of it. Um, the width is 30. Now, it's the same object, so this object is going to have the same height as this object here. So for the these bits, it's straightforward. It's just measuring up to 30s, the 330s that were there. final part is the height that the, the circle is here. To find that we need to find the height of this up here. So to find, we need to find the, the very top of it first. So turn these this way. And I'm taking a line through the center parallel to this side here because that would be our vertical so to speak. So that's the very top of the circle and then I'm going to go perpendicular back in along this way and where this touches the line here, that gives me the height. So from here to here is the height that I'm looking for from here up to the top. Now you can also measure it there if you like. Which is... Yeah, another way is you, al you also have it this way. You have the radius of the circle. So you can just add that on up on top as well. So that's the basic structure for this uh, piece here on the left. So now we just need to darken in as much of this as we can. Or, small bit of hidden detail here in the middle. That hidden detail is the this flat surface here behind uh, that circular piece, cylindrical piece. Okay, that's the part B of the question. So we have the elevation drawn over here and the elevation drawn over here. What we're going to find now is the axonometric view in the center. So for this, all our lines come at 30 degrees. So every point is going to come 30 degrees down along this way. So starting out with, we'll take this corner here, we're just going to find the base of it first, so this point and that side, taking the same points on the opposite side would be here and here, and at the front, this line coming down. So this here is part of the base. We can find the next points up, so we can take these ones here, and this one. So again, at the front and at the back. So that comes along to there. And coming along to the front of this, this point down along this way. So if something is vertical, so as in at the 15 degrees, then it's going to remain vertical here. If it's not, if it's inclined at an angle, it's still going to be inclined at an angle here. So it's uh, this here is going to be sloping. That would be at the front of it, and the back part of it is this one. That would be that front part. The next bit would be inside here, so it, it steps in. So we've drawn the lower block, now it steps in a little bit where it's narrower. So we're going to work our way up doing that one. So again, this line comes down along here, through the center, 
and here again. We already have the back point, that's this one and this one, no, we can't see that one, so it's this one here. At the front, we're taking this point. So this is the same narrowing piece, that's this here. That's projected down, 30 degrees. Get there at the front. And back along that way. So again, working our way up to the next level. So that's along here. So starting from this side again, projecting stuff down from this side. So line comes down along here and here. But I'm also going to take down the stuff in the middle. So those two. It's going to need, need them. So now this is where it's going to start getting messy. There's a lot of lines coming into it. This line projects down along this way. This is the top back, so that's intersecting this corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner. Same for the ones here and towards the front. This just hits the middle one, so there and there. And then finally, this one here at the front. So that's hitting uh, this one and this one. So I can darken in, I'm gonna darken in the outside of this first as much of it as can be darkened in. And then we're going to have a look at the bit towards the center. So this and this, they're vertical to each other, they're directly above each other. So this line's going to come up here, but it's only going to come up as far as that edge there, so it's going to disappear in underneath it. The same thing is going to happen at this corner here at the front. So this is going to join up to that point. So it's this one in here. But again, that's going to disappear in underneath uh, the ledge that's there and on the other side. So we can see that much there. And then finally, I can just do a little line coming back this way. I can darken that much in. So we're slowly building our way up. Again, doing the same thing now with the next level up. Just taking this edge here, this projects down. And this one. Back top corner and that comes down along this way. That's the back of it. Finding the front of it is done the same. So again, this corner here, it's the same height as this one. So where they intersect down here, the point that we're looking for. So that's going to join to um, here. Now I'm not going to do the bit across the front or here at the back just yet because the next thing now is this circle. So we have um, most of this drawn now already. Again, just a bit at the circle, so I'm going to just draw this one in lightly. I probably won't be able to see it because the cylinder is going to attach here to the front. All right, the next part of this is we're going to divide, is we're going to find the cylinder. So to find the cylinder, we need to number points on the curve. Um, so we're going to have to take different heights. We're going to divide this up with 60, 30 degrees head square. Um, or what would be 60, 30 degrees based on up here. So kind of handy way of doing that is if I line up here with one of the parallel lines, then I can take horizontal or I can take 60, 30 degree lines through the center here. So that's this one. I'm going the other way, 60, 30 through the center. Now I just had to do that off camera as the visualizer was getting in the way. So 60, 30 degrees, basically what we did is line this up with this here. Okay, and then you can put the set square down up against that and it'll go through the center. That gives us our 60, 30 degrees. The next thing that we need to do is we need to find um, heights. So we're gonna take these heights here. Now the reason we've done 60, 30, these are directly above each other. These are directly above each other. These are, are at 15 degrees to each other. So they're at this horizontal. So what I can do next is I'm gonna take lines parallel to this, 15 degrees, um, back in this way. 
and then we can measure heights in a moment. So for example, this height here, I can measure that same height, mark that over here, that's going to give me the, the point that I'm looking for. So compass or with your set square, that's up to you. Mark taking that height, marking it here. So this height here, that's the same height as this one over here. I'm going to do the same thing for the remaining points. So you've got one, two, three, four, uh, five heights that we need to mark down along the side here. I'm going to do that the exact same way. So you can measure from the center middle line here if you like or from the top. That's up to you. Maybe probably from where the center of the circle is might make most sense as you can mark above and below your line. I've started at the top, so I'm gonna keep going that way. That's that point. Again, measuring from the top down to the center we already have, that's this one, so I don't need to do that one. So that's the point for these ones, marking that height down. And then finally, one more to go. is in this one here. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to label all of the points and I'm going to do that starting up here. So we'll take this point here as one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. It's that one, uh, yeah, so that's ten. Now ten will be up against the front here, so it's not based on the angle. Um, and what I'm going to do next is for, let's say, point four here, that's the very top point, that will be both this one and this one, so they're at the same height so the front if it's on the front it'll be 0.4 here on the back it'll be 0.4 there so they're both the same so I'm going to label them down the side not directly on it um, so here up on top is 4 the next layer down is 5 and 3 then is 6 and 2 next one 7 and 1 this down here is 8 and 9 for this one down here and 10 is the bottom one so I'm going to worry about the front of the cylinder first, the bit that's closest to this side, and then we'll do the back afterwards, depending on how much of what we can see. So this works the same as we, all the other stuff that we've done so far. You take a point, you find the same point in the elevation and the end view, you project it down into the center. So let's start with point four. Point four projects down along this way. Point four at the front projects down along here. This point here is point 0.4. Now, I'm, as I said, I'm just doing the ones at the front for the moment, just for a bit of clarity. Point 0.3 and 5, they're in the same line coming down this way. There are separate lines up here. So point 0.3 comes down this way. That's them here. And 5 brought down along this way, hits the same line, gives us a point there. Make sure you label your points. 6 and 2 next, so I'll bring 6 and 2 down from up here, comes this way, 2 is this one, and 6 the same, so I'll project this down from up here, this is point 6. Again, continuing our way down along, um, 1 and 7, again, I'm just doing the ones at the front, ones at the back I'll do afterwards. Now you can do them both together, but just for clarity, I'll just do one at a time. So that's point one, point seven, back here. That's 
0.7, 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 is where that height line that we drew, and same for all the other points, intersects the left hand side of this here, that's the front point. 0.8 projected from up here now. And funnel that down. Uh, it didn't go far enough. This is point 0.8, point 0.9 the same, so that's point 0.9 here, and point 0.10 then is where that is the same thing comes down to the front. Joining these up as best we can, so drawing our curve in here as best we can. I darkened in the line there that I shouldn't have. So 10 around here, 9, 8, up through 7. Six, working our way back. Three and four. So that's the front of that. Um, you can see the edge where that comes over as far as here. And we can join this. So I've, all I've done here is I've just extended that line on there to meet the front edge. So that corner there and then this one's going to join down to point 10 same angle as this it's going to give us that bit there at the front final bit now is I need to draw find the points at the back okay so finding where they go disappear back around the outside so again same idea we already have our lines from the elevation so point four project that one down uh, three and five Two go through the same spot. So they're going to continue on. Now I don't. I haven't brought two down because two is one that I won't be able to see. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to, have to take a line up through here at 45 degrees through the center, and that's going to give me the point of where it's going to vanish. Same down here on this side. So this line comes down, a 45 degree line, somewhere between eight and nine, it'll be halfway between eight and nine, that's where it's gonna disappear and I won't be able to see it. I'm gonna continue on with the rest of the lines here just for the moment. Uh, seven and one, again, one I can't see. Seven is, I should do that. This point, that's seven. Um, eight is the same coming down this way. And again, I can't see where point nine is going to be. It's going to disappear behind. So I need to locate the, the tangent edge where it's going to disappear. I'm just going to darken in this bit here just for the moment so that's a bit clearer. And then finally, we just need to locate this little bit of an edge here, and that's going to be the point that's halfway between uh, the two points there. So it's where it's going to disappear. So again, lining these up this way. Just taking a 45 degree line through the center. Gives us a point here and a point up there up on top. There are the vanishing points. That's where it's all gonna disappear. Uh, and project again these down along. So we need to find where that hits. So that Point seven should go around there a bit more. Same for the one up top. And where it hits through the center there, that's our point. So I can extend that back just a little bit more. Now you, you should uh, find the point uh, between two and three up here and project that down or just gives us the corner there and darken in there. So that's pretty much all of this done. Um, final bit is we need to just darken this line coming along here. It's a bit there at the back. Okay, so this completes this question. It's the x anemetric projection. There's no hidden detail inside in this. And this is the 2019 higher level uh, question 3A.